Yeah, hi there. These comments, I'm, I'm going to use your initials H, and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the 7-step system to pass the TOEFL IBT. So how are you doing this morning? It is July 3rd. Tomorrow is Independence Day or holiday, so I'm going to do a little bit of my grading today, so I won't have to worry about it tomorrow. And I listened to your pretest in my online TOEFL course, and I do have some suggestions. Okay, so first of all, the main question is, based on the pretest with lessons 9 through 24, what are some lessons that you can focus on to improve your intelligibility of American English? Now, to be honest with you, Speaking English is just not natural for you, so I can tell you simply have not had a lot of practice. You're having a lot of problems with both vowel and consonant sounds of American English. So what do you do? Of course you want to go through my pronunciation lessons and start learning how to pronounce the vowels and consonants clearly, but that's not going to be enough. You have to make a concerted effort right now in your life. You have to make some changes. That means you want to use English a little bit more than you're used to. Watching TV, you can pay attention to news, history, documentary, and science programs. That's going to be very, very important for you. You can also watch movies. That's a great way to improve your pronunciation and your speaking of American English. Most importantly, I know it's tempting at school. You probably wouldn't believe this, but some students, when they go to our English language program, they don't even speak English, not even in class, if you can believe it. So for you, you need to speak English every day, all day long, as much as you can. This is an emergency. So if you want to make improvements, you have to practice. If you speak in your own language, you will not improve your speaking ability. So please tell your friends tell other students at Cal State if they try to talk to you in your first language answer them back in English you really want to focus on the English language right now alright okay here are some lessons that you need to focus on based on the pretest lesson number 9 10 12 13 14 15, 16, 19, lesson number 23, and also lesson number 24. So these are specific sounds that you can focus on right now in order to improve your intelligibility. Now, I'm also going to listen to your response to the three interview His questions. education background and your uh, work history. Um, my education is uh, bachelor uh, as uh, bachelor as accounting. Um, you want to say I have a bachelor's degree in accounting. You want to use a preposition in there. Um, and uh, uh, my work history is. Uh, and that's a great major, by the way. Now, when you're speaking, you have to be careful, especially for TOEFL speaking. Be careful you don't do too many pauses um, and uh, 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 these kinds of hesitations that it can cause your score to drop dramatically during the TOEFL. Uh, uh, I, w I was working uh, in three companies as accounting. Uh, the first one is uh, insurance company. I work uh, two years as... Uh, uh, I would say the first one was because you're no longer there, right? So the first company was blah, blah, blah. I worked there from a certain time. So when you're talking about past tense actions, events completed in the past, make sure that you use past tense verbs to do that. After that, I'm working in the biggest uh, uh, medical center. Uh, it's called International Medical Center. Uh, medical center, uh, it's called International Medical Center, uh, and companies as accounting. Uh, we'll say as an accountant. We have two kinds of words that we use to refer to your field. You have accounting, this is the subject, this is the course or the major. If you say accountant, A N T, that means a person who practices in the field of accounting. 
So in other words, accounting is a noun thing, and accountant is a noun person. So you want to make sure, I'll give you another example. If I say biology, that's a noun thing. If I say biologist, that's a noun person. So be careful. Make sure that you can distinguish between people versus things when you're speaking. The first one is uh, insurance company. I work two years as uh, uh, I would as say I there I worked, I worked two years there. I would say it like that and put that ED on the end of the verb. I'm working in the biggest uh, uh, medical center. Uh. And not I am working, but I was working as. So again, use past tense verbs. It's called the International Medical Center. Uh, and after that, I working in switch uh, company, uh, IKEA. After that, I'm working in the biggest uh, uh, medical center. Uh, it's called the International Medical Center. Uh, and after that, I work in switch. Uh, okay, so it's pretty clear, grammatically speaking, you're having trouble controlling your verb tenses. Now, this is something that you want to work on and try to avoid this kind of problem when you complete my integrated speaking practice test. you got to make a decision. I think in the beginning when you're doing the practice test, when you're explaining other people's ideas, for example, reading passages or lectures, you can certainly use uh, what we call uh, past tense. Actually, you can use a simple present to summarize other people's ideas. But in your case, you're talking about job experience and different jobs that you have had in the past, which means you should be using past tense verbs. Okay, hold on a minute. i got to shut a door here. I'll be right back. Give me a second. Okay, let's keep going. Working as auditor. Um, questions number two. What is important? And by the way, you did a good job there, even though you're having a lot of problems with your grammar. You did give a lot of detail to answer that question. That's a good sign. That means that you don't just talk about things in a basic sense. You understand the importance of giving details to support your ideas. So I like that. And for you, improve uh, your speaking and uh, pronunciation, uh, ability to, of American English. Uh, I think it's best one if you listen to music. Uh, because the music you can listen uh, every day in the radio or in my phone or in TV. Uh, the second... Uh, uh now, I think you're misunderstanding the question. The question says, why is it important for you to improve your speaking and pronunciation abilities? And I'm not asking you how you can do it. But why do you need to do it? Do you need English for a job? Do you want English more for your master's program? Do you want to improve your English so you can communicate with native speakers? So you're, you're, you're not really answering the question. Uh, way out uh, is a uh, movie uh, like, uh, 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 for me, I'm open account in Netflix and uh, uh, every day I show any movie. Actually, that's a good idea, Netflix. Yes, very good. And if you can watch, if you go to Netflix, go to the category, it'll say documentaries. And that would be really, really good practice for you right now because it'll talk about science type things and, and uh, factual type information. And that's going to be really important. In fact, if you want to practice uh, some good language use exercises with Netflix, what you can do, you can watch maybe a 20 or 30 minute program, and what you can do is take down some notes, write the notes on a sheet of paper, and then practice summarizing the information by either writing a 250 word summary of the Netflix show that you watched, or you can give a 60 second oral summary of the information. So now you're not just practicing listening, but you're also practicing writing and speaking at the same time. Uh, and reading, um, not, uh, I don't like reading, but uh, 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 for me, I'm open account in Netflix and uh, uh, 
story or book, but uh, uh, I like uh, reading, uh, read in Twitter, I and follow the, the English account or anyone account. Uh, yeah, reading is uh, good. Um, famous um, uh, actor like uh, Jennifer Lopez or... or uh, yeah, she's done a lot of good movies, Jennifer Lopez, and she has a lot of good songs. Like, like that, and I read uh, every day what... Uh, what they write every day. That's good. But probably my suggestion is you can read things entertaining type news articles and magazines that talk about celebrities and actors and all that. That's good. But I would also supplement that reading with some newspaper reading where you can focus on some other types of facts and information which would give you a little bit more of a higher level vocabulary. Now, the best thing that you, I mean, it's just, I'm just giving you my opinion here. Because you have a business background, I highly recommend for you the Wall Street Journal newspaper. This is a great newspaper. It's written for college-educated business professionals. If you can start reading the Wall Street Journal every day, your vocabulary and your grammar is going to get so much better over the next four or five weeks. So I would do that. That's a great uh, suggestion. Uh, if you don't want to buy the newspaper, you can find the Wall Street Journal, I think, in the library, or you can maybe find uh, newspaper articles online from the Wall Street Journal. So again, it's called the Wall Street Journal. That's probably the best newspaper in the United States for business professionals. Uh, the last question is, what do you hope to active in this uh, course? Um, I hope in this uh, this uh, uh, this activity. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. What do you ask? Uh, questions. Uh, what do you hope to uh, achieve? Okay. Um, um, I have uh, appointment uh, after one. A month uh, IPT, so I hope uh, to achieve the uh, score uh, to uh, take master degree uh, in another country. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Okay, so one thing I'd recommend. It's probably a pretty good idea if if you want to do this. If you go to the eighth section of my course, you'll notice. I have full-length IBT practice tests. So it's a good idea to take a full-length five-hour TOEFL practice test before you take the real thing for three reasons. Number one, when you take a full-length IBT practice test, I use a website called ScoreNexus. I apologize, it's not free. You have to make a, a payment of about $34 to take the practice test, but it will show you what your weaknesses are. And you can even, once you take the practice test and get your results, you can discuss your results with me, and then I can tell you how you can use my online TOEFL course in order to get better. Right? First of all, you need to see what your overall score is for the TOEFL exam. Then you need to see what your subtotals are in the reading, listening, speaking, and writing sections. Right? And then you can talk to me, and I can suggest a study plan that will best help you meet your goals. All right, you might hear some kids screaming in the background here. I apologize. I'm at my in-laws' house. There's two of my nephews are here, my six-year-old boy, and they're all out there screaming, acting crazy. You know how that goes. Uh, all right, so I think that we're pretty good here. All right, so so far. I've given you uh, some suggestions. I've let you know what things that you need to work on in order to get better. Uh, and the last thing I want to do right now is to give you an intelligibility score. So on a scale of 1 to 7, 1 being a high beginner of American English and 7 being a near native speaker, uh, I'm going to put you right now at about 3.4 3 out of 7. Uh, you are not where you need to be with your speaking. I don't know why. I don't know you that well, but you need to do a lot more practice with your speaking. That is for sure, especially because you want to take the IBT TOEFL exam. Uh, so your goal here 
is to go through my pronunciation lessons, follow the suggestions in this video, and step by step, one bit at a time, you will be able to improve your speaking and pronunciation of American English.